Hi, chess enthusiasts. So today we have this uh, great game that was played between uh, Garry Kasparov and Deep Jr. in 2003. It's actually the last computer match that uh, a human has actually won that I know of at least. And with computer match, I mean uh, a strong engine. <laughs> this clearly, clearly was a brilliant game. So Kasparov uh, plays the Queen's Gambit. And, uh, well, that's all theory, of course. And it's actually very interesting to see the uh, early on uh, choice of uh, Kasparov. Because uh, after uh, bishop to d6, we now see already g4, an amazingly sharp line against the computer. So <laughs> you choose a very sharp line against the computer. In a way, it kind of makes sense as the weak point at the time was opening knowledge of computers. So uh yeah well opening knowledge is of course not knowledge to calculate and there's either a book on or off but this was clearly a gap in the uh, opening preparation of the team that was supporting deep junior deep junior at the time by the way was uh, a lot stronger than than deep blue was years before so here the computer takes not uh, on g if it would take on g you would get a uh, knight takes g4 and then, uh, well, obviously g1 is a very logical move, h5 and after h3, well, just to give you an idea, if black would play him, black, black can play queen f6, but if black would play him, for example, match h6, then the compensation for white is basically that it has a very, very active position and it have, has pressure along the g-file, uh, black cannot uh, castle to the king side, so there are clearly a bit of cramped position and lots of opportunity and uh, space for uh, for white. Please don't think that white can win the pawn back because after rook takes g7, we have oops, queen to f6 and it is already curtains. So that did not happen after uh, g uh, g4. Uh, the junior took on c4, and now we have bishop to c4, uh, b6, e4, and e5. After e5, Kasparov chose to move his g-pawn to kick the knight away. Now the knight is not necessarily happy on h5, but it has the perspective of going to f4 in the future, so I wouldn't be happy with the move, but that must be the thought behind it. Bishop to e3, and now castle kingside. Kasparov castles on opposite side, and now queen to c7. d5, and uh, yeah, this is actually very interesting. Uh, b5 by the computer, and after b5, it's actually very nice to see what Kasparov does here. He decides to take. So D takes C6 here, and uh, it's clear that uh, black is attacking our bishop. With uh, D take, uh, takes C6, it looks like we are at least counter-attacking the, uh, the knight on D7. And we have a very strong uh, rook on D1. It will be dominating the default for quite, uh, quite a bit, which is of course very nice. So after the move that was played, B takes C4, you're absolutely forgiven that you think that after uh, c takes d7, white will have a strong game, because it's true, white will has a have a strong game. After bishop takes d7, we have queen to d2, this is a potential continuation, and then after, let's say, bishop g4, ju just to uh, give the line, queen takes d6, queen takes d6, rook takes d6, bishop takes, and now rook g1 would be a very likely continuation, and we can see that we have uh, still a bad placed knight for uh, for black. Um, the knight on c3 is clearly better. The rook on d6 is very active, very nice. Rook on g1 is not bad. The bishop on f3, not entirely clear, not doing a bad job there. Um, but it is clear that, that white is quite happy. Although the rook might be challenged on d6 by the, by the black rook. We can see that it is uh, white who is uh, controlling and is having initiative in this uh, type of position. So it would be totally fine. However, as you might have noticed in how I'm speaking about it, that did not happen. After the uh, move b bishop takes c4, Kasparov decided to play the very nice uh <coughs> intermezzo knight to b5, forking queen 
and bishop. And the point is that after queen takes uh, c6, boom, we have an absolutely beautiful knight standing on d6. As you can see, it has beautiful control of the board. It's straight into the, the black camp, and it, it cannot be removed that easily. Not at all, actually. Um, so black continues, bishop to b7. And now, uh, please don't make the mistake of trying to win the pawn on c4. You can win it if you want, but after uh, knight takes c4, then rook uh, c8, for example, and uh, yes, we can play b3, but now we have a very unhappy uh, white king. It's very open. It's very strong pressure from, uh, from uh, black ar uh, along the c file. And yeah, all hell will come at white king. A5 will be played, and there will be lots of horrible, horrible moves coming towards uh, towards white. And just to cap it off, the knight is not better on c4 than on on d6. So there's no need to do such a thing for for a mere pawn. So in this position, of course, Kasparov did not did not do that. He played a much stronger move, queen to c3, adding a second attacker to the uh, e5 pawn. And it's also actually quite amazing what the uh, response of Deep Junior was in 2003. The, uh, the computer decided to play Rook A to E8. Absolutely. Uh, first of all, brilliant of Kasparov that he, he's going to get uh, now already equality. Also an, an, an amazing decision for a computer, especially at the time, to... Uh, to decide to get rid of the knight on, on d6 because the knight is so annoying he says you know what uh, take my rook i don't want to lose the the, the pawn versus uh, a, a and, and have a uh, still a, a horrible knight against me on uh, d6 take my rook and get it over with which is actually in this position uh, the logical move to play just to show you an alternative let's say a bl uh, black uh, doesn't do that and it's like oh let's play f6 now there are many lines possible many lines i'll just uh, touch uh, touch one of them and then play them out reasonably deeply so you see what uh, what the potential uh, continuation is but in general the knight on d6 is too strong it's just an absolute monster so uh, a continuation here would be rook h to g1 of course going on the, the, the g file uh, queen c7 uh, we need to keep defending the bishop on on b7 because the the knight is eyeing it see it's see one of the reasons why it's so annoying um now white can play g takes f6 rook takes f6 adding an, an additional attacker to the knight because he wants to drive the knight away so it shows a line for you where we try to cope with the knight just play knight b5 harassing the queen and counter attacking the knight on d6 then the most active move from black the most threatening move from black would be to go to c6 where you counterattack the white knight and still defend your own knight on d7 uh, but yeah then we do have knight takes e5 of course and after knight takes e5 queen takes e5 defending our our own knight uh, queen back to e8 is logical check takes and again <laughs> we put a fork with our knight it's just one of the lines right but again we have a fork fork on bishop and rook uh, what do you want to do if you hear a uh, play for example rook to e7 then we have to bishop so that's not pleasant then if we then have the alternative rook to b8 just to show you get rook to g5 harassing the bad placed knight you see how everything comes together here knight to f4 bishop takes f4 rook to takes f4 and rook to b5 just to show you how menacing that knight in every single line is and keeps being so uh, this is just a, a potential line but go over it yourself if you like and you shall see that that knight is just extremely extremely devastating so for that purpose in uh, this position black decides to play rook a to e8 which is actually a good move knight takes e8 and rooks to takes e8 it's also amazing that Kasparov is able to get like a, a quality against the computer within 18 moves absolutely absolutely very good rook h e1 um, queen to b5 of course don't take on e4 because oops so queen b5 uh, knight d2 
rook c8. This is actually a very illustrative what the uh, Kasparov does here. So king b1, eh, stepping out of the c file, very logical. Uh, knight to f8, but now king to a1, very nice little move. Uh, clearly it steps out of the, uh, the b file where the queen has some influence. And uh, note that it's also on a different color square as the black bishop. It's also very key. So the king is very safe on a1. It's, it's very important in many lines and also in the co uh, continuation of the game. You shall see why it has an advantage. Knight to g6, preparing to go to f4. And now, uh, just to show you, you could have done this a couple of moves ago, but this is, of course, a mistake. You don't want to take on a7, why not? Because then black follows up with uh, knight to f4. The knight will jump into d3 later. Now black will have a very strong knight. And not only that, uh, the uh, black rook can reposition itself later on a8. And our once a safe king is far less safe. Now the black a pawn is gone. So we don't want that pawn, at least not now. Um, so also Kasparov clearly doesn't want that pawn. And he plays rook to c1. Very, very good move. Bishop to a6. And now, and I would have <laughs> never found this move, uh, b3. It is, it is actually a beautiful move to see. Uh, again, uh, bishop takes doesn't uh, work because of the same reason. b3 is, is very beautiful. Uh, a bit counterintuitive for many chess players because you open your king whilst the queen and the rook are still on the board. But it, it makes total sense. The king is very safe on a1 uh, for, for, for many reasons. Um, we are attacking the pawn on c4. Now also with our pawn, so the pawn, the queen, the indirectly the rook and the knight are all attacking it. So if black ignores the threat and plays, let's say, f6, then we can just play knight takes c4 and we have a free pawn and a very solid position here. So being a computer it doesn't want to give up material of course so we get c takes b3 but then we have the wonderful response queen takes b3 uh, kasparov absolutely is happy trading queens getting the queens off the board uh, reduces the uh, attacking potential from bl from, bl uh, from black and thus its counterplay the rook the versus the the, the quality so to speak so the rook versus the knight is very happy on an open board. So the advantage of white will be more uh, prevalent than anything else. And not only do we attack the, the queen, but also the rook. So whilst some human players would probably have tried to keep the queen on the board and play uh, queen e8, but still we get a very strong position because rook takes c8, bishop takes c8, rook to b1, queen to b8 is next, threatening a7, be, uh, being on, on very strong on the 8th rank, and it, it's just absolutely devastating the position that white has here. Um, that did not happen because the computer said, okay, I understand, uh, I cannot allow that, and I want to keep my pawn, so rook to a8, and now we get queen takes b5, and after bishop takes b5, actually this is over now. Uh, rook c7 was still played and it is in this position that the team from Deep Junior resigned. Uh, it's clear why. Uh, white is up to the quality, it is uh, dictating the play. At this moment we are, are attacking a pawn twice that we need to respond, to, that black needs to respond to. The uh, rook is on an active square. Rook e to c1 is coming next. The knights have nothing, nothing to bring in against uh, the, the rook. And it is just, this is just a matter of technique for Kasparov and it won't be challenging for him, for him at all to finish this off. Uh, okay, so this was the last game that I could find that uh, a human actually was able to beat a computer at the highest level. Um, the match itself ended in a tie, was which was a great result in, in 2003 for, uh, for Kasparov. Perhaps the Deep Junior team was also ha happy with it. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments what you thought of this game. Do you want to see more human versus computer games or would you like to focus on uh, more Grandmaster games instead? I'd like to know your opinion so I can focus on this in the next videos. 
for now. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. Have good games and see you later. Bye-bye.